a little volume up there. How about it? And happy Friday to everybody. Welcome to Talking Baseball Australia Live. Baseball's best mate. Let's roll the open in three, two, one. Here we go. It's Talking Baseball Australia. It's baseball updates you'll really love. The MLB and ABL news you want. With Paul Morgan and Dan Vaughn. Baseball's best mate all year round. From the batter's box to the mound. All I can do is clap that we made it to the finish line. We made it the finish line. Good morning to you. Talking Baseball Australia Live, baseball's best made. Uh, Paul Morgan, Dan Vaughn with you. I'm Dan. He's Paul. Uh, I'm just clapping. We made it. We did. We did make it. And and, and we we have, in Australia, we are one of the few baseball sites that remain as, as old Zuckerberg and co decided to cut out all our news in Australia. But... Uh, <sighs> We are Major League Baseball's gone in Australia, the Facebook site. That's that's cactus baseball.com.au. That's cactus as well on the Facebook. But uh, yeah, you can still uh, you can still join us, DV, on the Talking Baseball Australia. So that's very exciting. Yeah, you know, and I don't want to, I don't know enough about what's going on. I've, I've done some reading about it. You and I chatted about it. Uh, but we will tell you this off the top that we are working on a couple of items, um, mainly, I just lost Paul there. He'll be back in a moment, but I lost him there. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't see the video. I hear your audio. I, I don't, you're on the screen there. Uh, maybe they must have heard what you said, partner, and said, oh, wait, let's pull this guy off the air. Um, yeah, let me see if we can pull you up here in a second. There he is. He's back. He, he's back. Uh, you pull him back in there. Uh, there you go. You're back. I'm back. I got this, okay. Got this, uh, got the maybe you've maybe you, yeah. <laughs> maybe he did. There you go. Uh, before we go into what we're really here to talk about, we were we're working on a couple things. Oops, sorry, I almost kicked my lights over on me. Uh, a couple things to prevent uh, any kind of if if this thing goes on a little longer. Uh, you and I are working on a couple of things, and we're going to discuss that next week. So we'll get to that. But uh, never fear. We will take this thing somewhere, someplace, if we have to. So that's uh, that's really all I got to say about that. Uh, but good to see Tonk out there. Shane Tonkin's out. Uh, Shane Tonkin out there, and uh, Brian as well. Uh, was a very interesting season. Came to a close, partner, uh, and it ended pretty much to no one's surprise, I suppose. With the uh, uh, let's just rewalk everybody through what happened, okay? Because we were on the air last Friday. Uh, we thought there was a possibility this could happen, that uh, with all the different COVID border restrictions and all that, mm. there were, and with the small outbreak that had happened, and there was also at the time, I believe we were actually on the air, which seemed to happen every time we're on the air, they were actually yeah. pull, pulling fans away from the uh, Australian Open and things of that nature. So you, you and I speculated that there was a good chance that last Friday's game would be the championship, and it's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Once we get off the air, the ABL uh, powers that be decided that it would be a one and done. So despite the fact Canberra did win and did go to play, who would have would played the loser of that game last Friday, hey, that's that was just kind of an extra game Canberra got, a well-earned one. Uh, the final was played a few hours later, uh, 9-2, Melbourne over – Perth, but uh, that all developed kind of boom out, out of nowhere. But I think it worked out about what you expected, don't you think, partner? Yeah, I don't think that. I mean, I think we'd, we'd talked about it all season. It was going to take an incredible effort for someone to beat Melbourne. Um, yeah, certainly from my perspective, no, you know, but I think yours as well, DV, no real, um, no real worries about in terms of. Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, the best team won the competition. Like we we could pretty safely say that. So, look, yeah. I think the good part is, you know, the, the reigning champions they keep the shield again. Probably the shield keeps its integrity by Melbourne winning it again, the best team winning it again. But uh, you know, like the, for the Heat, it was um, it, it looked like for for them that, that they sort of just could not again. Boy, it was just Groundhog Day when Dylan Unsworth starts, wasn't it? They could not get their yeah. offense going. 
and, and then uh, Sawpole gets those two two quick outs, and then he's he's in that three two count. That uh, pitch misses low and walks him, and um, boy, then the uh, the aces just absolutely go to town, and that that was that was the story of the day. Yeah, it really was. I uh, and it's it's such a a testament to just how good I think those aces are, just how deep they are. Because we talked about this, you almost had to be mistake free. You couldn't the things that have been your Achilles heel defense. You know, you could have the defense failure. The defense was pretty was pretty good uh, mm-hmm. in general. The walks had not been a problem for Perth. Perth was the fewest issued the fewest walks as a pitching staff in the league, but that reared its ugly head at the worst possible time. Yeah. A lot of things went right. You had some timely early offense, but you couldn't get that that you couldn't get that key RBI in. There's one big difference that I noticed too, and that it just going back through the game and watching it again. But the timely hitting was one, obviously. Um, and then, of course, uh, just that deep lineup. And you you have to be so perfect when you play that Aces Club. You got to be so perfect in everything you do. And I really thought Unsworth was due a good outing. He still pitched very well. I mean, you know, he yeah, went, gave up yeah. two runs in four innings. I mean, that's, you know, that's not a quality start, but that's, that's a, that keeps you in a ball game. And it really wasn't until that really two out rally. And the key, I think in the difference in these two teams is at this, at this moment where we sit right now, the Victorian domestic talent is slightly ahead of where the WA domestic talent is. And what I mean by that, it's the younger talent is where the edge may be. There's still, I mean, I would put Tim Kennelly who's the best player against anybody right now currently up and down the lineup. But that being said, that two-out rally was started by the Australian contingent. And then that really, when you can do that and then let your, your imports help solidify things, it was just a, a, a it was an unstoppable force right there. And now it goes back to the the old saying that we we said in the off season as well, DV. If if you know if you've got a blueprint, you want to win a championship. Which which avenue do you go down? Do you go down? Yes, I want to be affiliated with uh, said MLB team, or right. I'm, I'm going to go poke my nose around what's happening in the American Association and and different independent leagues and and build a team like the Aces. And I think still still that independent. Uh, Independent talent, American Association, they call it what you want. Talent is undefeated in this league, and I still we're, yeah. we're, we're still yet to see a team that doesn't really have that as their you know, core function um, win a championship. And, and it's just uh, yeah. so it, go, it goes back and back, and it's just you know like now it's it's a case of it'll be interesting to see. I know there are some owners around the league really really chomping at the bit to win a championship. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what a couple of teams do in the in the off season, DV. But uh, you know, and, and now the challenge starts, and I'm sure the challenge is there for the Kansas City Monarchs as as well. We still sit in a, in a same with MLB, same with MIL, but we we still sit in an uncertain an uncertain world when it comes to crowds and and leagues and and formats and you know. So it's uh, it's it's still all interesting, DV. But uh, pitches and catches are reported, so that's that's a, yeah. that's a good sign. That's a good sign, and there's, there's, we have a lot going forward. We're going to get to down the road, but as far as you know, the the different dynamics, the MILB, MLB. But uh, I will add this too. I'm right with you on that whole formula. We saw Perth use that formula to a degree. Now, granted, there was some inflated players mixed in there, but the mm-hmm. most successful Heat clubs were the same formula that Melbourne's used, that Brisbane's used. We've yet to see an affiliated loaded import lineup. Blue Jays, well, I guess the Blue Jays Canberra would have been the more successful yeah. run. We, we, we I actually, I guess when we get right down to the Tampa run of currently making the postseason every time they've been in Perth is probably the most successful run of that bunch. But we've yet to see a affiliated club with domestic talent mixed in win the Claxton Shield under this current yeah. Australian baseball league format. And I think you're right. I mean, you know, you do know this. You do know this. If you're a Heat fan, you know that you're going to have a pretty daggum good club next year. They brought you top-notch talent. The only problem is those guys are worn and done for the most part. Where the difference in Victoria is those guys are able to come back. Delman Young, who I, I we probably can go on a whole segment about him 
being a clock, probably being the Helms Award winner. Assuming they have a Helms Award, I'm sure they will. Yeah. He right. should be. I mean, if it's not him, it's Daryl George or Grant Witherspoon, and those three would be the top three. And I would think Young, with uh, 400 average, five homers, and uh, uh, top five in homers, he was second and actually second and, in runs batted in. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and pitched and pitched as well, Delman. Yeah, and pitched. And yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty, yeah. Pretty. yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. But, but but you you figure those guys are coming back. Back. The aces are getting those guys back. They're coming back every time. Uh, we're seeing, you know, I get Colin Willis coming back every year. Uh, you know, you're seeing these guys returning, and that's a big feather in the cap. Plus, the Victorian youngsters are growing up before our eyes. And I think that's that that recipe. And I think you're going to see Brisbane. And you look at Brisbane, you know, they've with a lot of younger kids this year for that same reason. Kind of what Perth did in the 16 season with a lot of youngsters and, and try to you know, kind of reset things. I think you're going to see that. I think the model's there. The question is how many – it does this American Association agreement that the ABL mm -hmm. the association have, how much of that reciprocal is going to go work back and forth, yeah. and how yeah. much will that influence clubs to say, well, you know what, we'll take two race players or whatever, or we'll change the rosters, or you're just going to do a better job of mixing and matching. That may be the bigger thing. Yeah. It was spot on, Ethan's uh, quite Yeah, so I think more so Nagope, etc. Young aren't uh, exactly affiliated right right this second, but uh, yes, this, is, this right. is more I agree with what uh, agree with what Ethan's saying, but more you know more clubs doing a doing a deal with Perth, Tampa Bay, right. Adelaide, uh, Philadelphia, uh, th those kind of things, which which yeah, Melbourne right. sort of go the independent route. So it's a little different, but uh, yeah, DV though that's uh, that's the season wrapped though, and. Uh, Look, in the end, we got done, as, as you said, uh, clap it for, for, get, for getting it done. It was, uh, you know, it, was, it would have been, uh, I'm sure Cam Vale and uh, Tonks and everyone else probably aged 15 years this season <laughs> and, the, and, the, and, and the owners and uh, everyone else. The Heat are still over here in isolation for the next, I think they've still got nine days of isolation to go uh, before they're let out into the, into the community. But um, yeah, tough. It's uh, end, end of the road, but, it, you know, I think at the end of the day, you can't really complain with who won the championship. No. They were the best no. team last year. They were the best team this year. So congratulations again, Melbourne Aces. Yes. And uh, They do DV, it right. They, they do it right. They, they do. And it, it turns our page over to Major League Baseball for now and, of course, American Association. But uh, it, it almost... Almost just looking at some footage today. Of course, you can't look at uh, Major League Baseball on Facebook anymore. Just remember here in Australia, but <laughs> having a look at some of the teams, um, you know, like a lot of teams arriving, it, it it almost feels like maybe the world is normal again. I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. I, you know, we're we're still a ways away. Um, yeah. Uh, this announcement made in the last twenty four hours, Major League Baseball has moved the minor leagues double a on down their start will be around the first week of may uh so they're actually the triple a will start two weeks prior but they hadn't really set any start dates but i believe the opening day for the for the affiliated ball is the fifth american association is the 18th uh, of may uh, usually it's an april 6th or 7th start so about a month two weeks late uh, depending on whether triple a or double a single a or whatever uh, i think the feeling is that there'll be some type of normal baseball, but it's still going to be under the guise of uh, things like, for example, in the minor leagues, they've reshuffled. We'll, we can take a whole show on that too. They've renamed the leagues. They reshuffled the leagues, mostly geographically. But what they've done too is where before you might go on a three-city get a three city road trip. You might say, let me use the South Atlantic League. You might, which is no longer the South Atlantic League, but you might go uh, Greensboro, Augusta, and... I don't know, a third place. Well, now you're just going to go six game series on the road and then you'll come back home for six. They're not going to do multiple city tours where you'll do a one, a six game series on the road, come home for six. They're balancing it out like that. And we're even seeing the American Association. Our schedule came out last a week ago and the longest that the Monarchs are going to be on the road this year will be seven games. So uh, mm -hmm. they've cut those down. We've had a couple of 10 and 11 game road trips, that's not happening either. More fives and sixes because they want to cut that down. So you're seeing some changes. Now, how long that stays this way, I don't know. My big question in, in, in looking forward to the ABL crystal ball partner, are we in this same situation hmm. opening day ABL 2021-22? 
Well, well, I think there's every chance you sort of are in, in some in some respects. I think um, you know, like it's you know, vaccines obviously roll out soon here. Um, well, they've rolled out now. I think or rolling out this week. Um, so you'd assume you know, your majority of your population by November would either be vaccinated or not vaccinated, depending on what your opinion is on on that subject. But uh, <laughs> I, I think. Um, yeah, look, I, I can't see it in November, to be honest, being just like it like it was. I mean, I, I think you know that the travel factor will be slightly slightly different. But um, look, the ABL ha- had a good opportunity. This I, look, I think Australia has, depending on what they do with international travel, it, it depends on 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 how I guess the virus spreads still. But uh, but uh, look, I, I think with, I think there'll be still some impact by November. But um, and I think this is a good question as well from from Ethan, which we should take uh, take a second answer. So the question is: Do you think it's more important for the league and the ABL to get young affiliated prospects than they have the chance of becoming solid big leaguers, or to get older, more developed indie players that don't have major league ceilings? And then he thinks, uh, from marketing perspective, I would say Akuna, Akiyamai, Gregorius played in the ABL is extremely valuable. I, I agree on that part, but I'm just not sure that the league's necessarily ever marketed itself that well in, in terms of uh, the marketing these players to media and, and whatnot. It's on the list of items, Ethan, that, that we probably could rake over, you know, rake through a little bit. I think it's very important that the Acunas of the world, that those guys, we, we do celebrate them being the big leagues. And I think, I, for example, I think Melbourne's done a great job of that. Uh, I think Perth's done a great job, and now granted he's an Australian, but I think they did a great job over the years of both Warwick mm-hmm. Saulpol when he was in the big leagues, and very a, a great job of Liam Hendricks. I, I think there's a fine line there. My main concern, I think, for this league is the recognition domestically, and and how you balance that. Hey, we got these guys that were here for a year or whatever, but also how are you going to celebrate these stars? the next generation, the na- and maybe it's the national team. Maybe, you know, maybe it's something along those lines because, because you've got, to me, you've got two issues. You've got the, you know, the ABL wants to celebrate, Hey, these, these guys played there, but at the same time, you know, the, the, the story of, you know, whoever and insert, whatever prospect Aaron Whitefield, for example, you know, his story should be told domestically in Australia. I think that's as big of a calling card too, for the young Australian players to say, Hey, you know, this guy is is a neighbor of mine in South Australia. I too can make the big leagues. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a fine line there, and maybe and maybe I'm answering your question with two different answers. But I think yes, you do want to have that, and it's good that Acuna is a former ABLer. But how many Australian fans, the casual fan? Now you and I know, but how many casual fans does that move the needle on? Now. I don't know. I guess that's 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 my my question back to you, Ethan. Uh, and, and, and interesting, DV. I'll, I'll just jump in because, like the National Basketball League, the NBL uh, league here, which do you know, which could the ABL and the NBL, the basketball and baseball, should really follow similar models. But you know, the Lamelo Ball, of course, played for Illawarra Hawks here last year. Like, it didn't it voted or well decided not to go to play. NCAA decided to play in the NBL and put himself in the NBA draft. Of course, now plays for the Charlotte Hornets and is probably going to win Rookie of the Year. But the NBL basketball, they leverage and they promote and they are on the on the Lamelo Ball train so hard. You know, like there's there's just so much stuff around his Illawarra jersey, around what Lamelo Ball's doing, and 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 this, this is kind of, I guess, back to my point is. You know, we've had you know, some great players play in this league, but, um, you know, we, we probably, I think, at, at a league level, there's just maybe not enough done to to celebrate what Ronald Acuna Jr. is doing currently at Atlanta or, or, or something like that. I think there's tidbits, but maybe not exactly, exactly. Um, but, yeah, and exec, uh, RJ Hampton as well, who was over at New Zealand, he, you know, Huge, like the NBL, the NBL basketball. If I was to see whoever becomes the next CEO of the ABL or Baseball Australia, I think should just look exactly as to what basketball is doing in this country and do the exact same thing because I think basketball is doing a phenomenal job. Um, they've really like they've they've marketed themselves as we want to be known as the second best league in the world. We're never going to be the NBA. We know we're never going to be the NBA. We just want to be known as the second best league in the world. 
and and that's it. And that if, we, if right. we can achieve that, and if we can start to take guys who don't want to go to college, or or we start to really get that, is it the G League or the the D League? Yeah, the yeah, D League, right? The, yeah, right. if we can kind of if we can take that and we we can be that and take guys who want to go straight to professional instead of playing college basketball, whatever. And I think that's that's the one thing I think from from an ABL point of view. I think if you if you just look at the way that the NBL's done a lot of things, I think um, I think it, it's great. And Bob says uh, what kind of advertising is done local in Australian market? Very little, Bob. Very very little. Um, another area that. Uh, you know, like the basketball does very well, for example, but um, something that, you know, again, if, if I'm taking over as the CEO of baseball, and I probably think I know a thing or two about, you know, the world of advertising and marketing, there's a lot of work to do in that area. And they, yeah. they have they have definitely not done a great job in that area. Yeah, and I, I think probably it's the walk before you can run kind of thing or crawl before you yeah. can walk. And it's something yeah. you and I have talked about over and over again. I think it's big that, that, that the Acunas of the world get celebrated, but I don't know if that's where this place is yet, where this league is yet. And it's something we talked about before. They're in some they're in some broadcast quagmires currently yeah. because – that's that's not really changed and evolved since you and I've been involved in the league. If anything, it's probably kind of gone sideways or maybe backwards because they didn't go with an audio platform early on and now they're playing. And, and so they never grew the broadcast footprint. I use that as an example. You could use this as merch, advertising, whatever. But I think they're getting close enough. And I think individual clubs are getting close enough. Aces are one of those. They're able, they're able to now capitalize on championships, local growth, and former ball players who played for them who are now in the big leagues and start to wrap that around to their fans. Not everybody's in the same boat just quite yet, but they're all getting there. And I think I think that's the thing where you're not quite where you need to be yet, but I think on the horizon, it's got to be the case. And kind of talking in circles there, but it makes sense. And you look at the teams, you know, it's, I was thinking about this this morning. In our time in the ABL, when you and I basically coincide, uh, there have been what three WA players made or two, but two WA players have made the big leagues. Am I correct? Am I missing one? Yeah, you have had two. Yeah, Work and, and Liam have both been the big leagues the whole entire time. And I, I think the Heat did a phenomenal job and baseball WA did a phenomenal job over the years of promoting them. Now, granted, hasn't got a lot of traction nationally, but they've really capitalized where they can on those two individuals over, over the years. And so, you know, they've, they've, they've been fortunate. Not everybody's been that fortunate. And everybody's had two big leaguers make the big leagues in this since the league's been going. So, you know, that, that also is part of it too. But I, I think really they're not quite to that point yet, but they're close. That's my, that's my yeah. take. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Matt, I don't know how – I know we talked about this. We, but we getting talked Huber about – we, 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 we talked about this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about Luke Hughes, but all Huber, yeah. but and I, and I think look, Huber on there, I thought it was great. I, I Absolutely, I, I really, thought, I thought it was great, and um, I, I'm glad that um, for that kind of game, a, a guy who you know Huber or Hughes, um, you know Hughes probably the connection for the two teams. Huber's obviously done it at, at um, the big league level as well. Um, I thought it was great. I, I really thought his insights were great, and um, you know, like yeah. I think we again we, we yeah. we've got yeah. these guys that have played. Major League Baseball that probably, and that's another point, DV, like there's not all of them, but there, there are some some guys who have, who have played, uh, you know, Major League Baseball that we don't tap into. I, I think Grant Balfour, for example, would be a great yes. presence to have in, in, in baseball in, in some respect. Uh, right. You know, it's, it's there are some guys that, did, yeah, I think, I thought it was great. Anyway, well, Justin Hume and you're seeing, in those opinions. you're seeing Ryan Roland Smith, what he's doing in Seattle. I mean, that's a guy that's Australian that's doing it, great media things in Seattle. By the way, there was three ABLers or three WA guys in the big leagues. I came in when Luke Hughes was still on the big league roster, but he yeah. but that, he was on, he was the big leagues the year prior, uh, off and on for a couple of years. So there was actually been three WA products that made the big league since my time. Uh, that's where my numbers were off. But yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I thought the broad, again, you know, and we could the NBA uh, best way by the, the word word players by that. Yeah, uh, how much would it take to get the ABL to be serious pathway to major league success for fringe guys? Well, I, I think the one problem is 
it's the time of the year. It's a, it's a, it's a North American winter league. You know, I'm not saying that can't help you, but by and large, winter league baseball is used for tuning up, rehabbing, getting in shape, keeping the old arm going, getting some at bats. It's not there. Now there are some guys, there are some players who go to the Caribbean and wherever who may have been injured and who find out, Hey, I can still do it. But winter ball is more of a tune up kind of keep the, it's, it's a, the lack of a better word, winter ball tends to be training ball, just kind of training, training, extended spring training. And it's pre, it's pre spring training. Now, don't tell that to the folks that are ABL fans like us, because we take it pretty seriously. It's a big deal to us, but it's, it's prospect development. It's getting those prospects extra at bats. If the league was played near the same time the Northern Hemisphere League was played, different story altogether. And that's probably something that we can dive into down the road, maybe even ask Cam Vale that when he has our exit interview with us down the road. Uh, we we're going to keep this short. Let me let me do this because we give me, and I'll, I'll give you two and you give me two, things that went right and things that we got to work on from this year. And I'm going to say before I say this, this all comes under the guise of COVID in 2020-21. Nothing we could do about that. That, that, I mean, obviously, I looked at the attendance numbers today. Uh, it was the lowest draw that the leagues had, but you can't, you can't really, you can't really blame the league for that because it was a COVID deal. So, uh, offense, you know, the stats and things like that. I throw all those out the window yeah. because of the fact that it's COVID. But what are the two things you think that that went right, or two things that went wrong, and two things that went right? What do you think? I think getting the broadcast on the KO Sports platform on Fox Sports was a tick, big tick. I think there was a lot of, lot of casual fans and a lot of people who just interacted even with me on the broadcast that probably yes. haven't really ever tuned in the broadcast. So I think that was a big tick. I think that was done really, really well uh, to, to get that now. You know, it's a good foundation to build on for sure. I think that was that was done really well. Um, the second thing I think they did really well it was just was just I think it was the owners' buy-in in terms of the agility to move. Like when they had to move, they moved. Um, you know, there was no raising the white flag at any time in the season. Like they could have, you know, and they could have easily not had a season. Secondly, they could yeah. have pulled out ten times in the season as well. But I think, you know, like I, I, all these teams have made financial losses. All these owners have made financial losses, but they they kept the show on the road. So I think. Uh, for me, like, you know, like the owner group needs to have a real um, real pat on the back as well because, you know, it's their money at the end of the day. It's their money that, that, that uh, they're losing. So it's just, in my opinion, like, yes, there was a lot of good stuff done by a lot of people, but, but you know, there are a group of people who put their money on the line, their time on the line, and, um, you know, the owners and, and the players as well, obviously, for being flexible. I and mean, look at the Heat guys. They're, they're in quarantine at the moment. To go and play you know, two games, so that they've, they've all made sacrifices. So, so I think those are things that that were well done. I'll I'll take your uh, two well done things. Yeah, yeah, my two well dones. I I will. I've come around on. Well, you know, we both love the whole hub, not the hub, the festival. We believe the festival atmosphere has got. We believe in the minor league atmosphere, music, entertainment, creating a vibe. The only way you're going to grow the game is make it a place to go and get people into the game. And kids, like we've talked about the formula you talked about two weeks ago. I actually think, despite the fact that I've been pretty, that the crowds were disappointing in the hub, I think the hub has a possibility, whether it be postseason hub, moving it around. But I think there's, a, I guess what I'm saying is they tried some things this year. Some things worked, some things didn't. The hub, I think, was a nice diversion a kind of cool thing now was it a, was the opportunity seized probably not and by the looks of the crowds but that again you can't blame that's all covid because you can't promote something that you didn't know was going to happen until two days before so but i like the concept there that that was very good uh like you i i like i like that i mean i like that uh number two uh i love the efforts that were made Especially, I would I'll single out Queensland for example for what they did, sending you know, kind of doing whatever it takes to put a team together and fly them across the country. I think baseball won in general by the, a spirit of camaraderie. I, I I didn't get the impression that anyone was anyone was trying to undercut anybody else. It, it was competitive, but everybody had their own issues and everybody adjusted. I I tip the cap to what a great job the owners and license holders, let's say, did to kind of 
as things moved, as the goalposts moved, they moved. And I think that also goes to your leadership with Cam Vale, what Cam did to get this thing to the finish, because that to me was was the big thing. So I'll take those two things, uh, the hub thing and, you know, just the fact that they got, you know, able to survive all the different moving parts because, boy, you're right. It could have been very easy to pull this plug back December 15th, Christmas Day, you name it. 100%, 100%. And, and look, the, the two things, um, you know, the two things I think to improve on, I think the ABL ha- I think the ABL in general have to figure out like what audience do they want to go after? Because I think we've had sort of this sort of dabble into like, oh, we're very much going into the Asian market. That's where we want to go. This year we have games playing at nine o'clock in the morning here because we want to get into the US market. I think there needs to be a decision made. Look, and I, I think the US, look, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think the US, the local and the US market is the market to go for. But uh, I think there needs to be a decision made because I think that was a, I, I think that was, I think because they were playing so many just random games on nine, ten o'clock in the morning, you know, I think you you lost so much of your local audience. And you know, we looked at the box box scores with the crowds of 100, 200 people. I mean, it's it's not really doing a lot to grow your game locally. So right. um, that that was one thing. And the second thing I think I need to improve on is is the broadcast. I think I think it's just, in my opinion, as, as you've always said, DV, it is a three hour advertisement for your city, your state, your country, your league, your, the people in it. And I think we just sort of, you know, uh, we just spend too much. We just maybe don't have a good enough across the board strategy to kind of go, well, how do we do a lot of stuff in and around the broadcast to make Perth look great or the city look great or the state look great or, or the country look great? Um, I just think it's a missed opportunity there. But um, that 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 would be, I think they did a great job in the championship game. Uh, Nick Batters and Huber with the Victor with all the things around Melbourne. They showed, they showed the coffee shops. They showed the showed the tourism areas of Melbourne. They did the little cut in and cutouts. Um, I thought that was great, and I think you know for this league to grow, you have to commercialise your broadcast, and and that's something that you know you and I are very passionate about this subject. Yep. But you know, I, I just don't feel like they've ever ever taken the broadcast seriously or tried to commercialize it seriously. And and I don't think ever, anyone's really ever realized what an enormous asset the broadcast is, but uh, that would be my, if, if that would be my area, area of improvement. Yeah. I, I would echo to that too. Uh, we do know that this was not a COVID thing. The, the, the plan all along prior to, the season was to build this thing from the outside in. I don't think that's a good idea. I believe we must build our game domestically in Australia. Um, that must be a must. It must start with our youngsters, getting them involved. We've talked about this. I, and, uh, that was the plan without the COVID. That that was a plan to have the, the Korean audience, the New Zealand audience, uh, the American audience. And, oh, by the way, well, here's some folks in Australia watching too. That's – that's going to put your that'll put money in your pockets yeah. for a short time, but it'll probably fold your league in a few years. So I'm with you on that. I'll just add that to it. Um, I also would add that uh, I was a little, and this is maybe, and maybe this is COVID related. I don't know, but the merchandise opportunities seem to be sort of just floating around out there, kind of each team doing their own thing, which is fine. But some teams are doing it, some teams aren't. Uh, I've always mentioned this before, caps are gold. A box of caps are, are, are equivalent to a million dollars, or not a million dollars, but let's – a thousand dollars in a box is about right. – as a, caps are gold, okay? You're right. You're right. And, and they are. And, and caps and T-shirts and merch. And, and, and I, I saw over and over again in all these chat rooms as I've watched – what I would usually do is I'd watch – uh, part of the show on Facebook, part of it on the, the local, if it was on here in the States, or, and I would go to YouTube. I'd watch because I want to get a different opinion of different audiences, what they were saying. And, and most of the time, it was either, hey, I didn't know this existed, and B, how can I get merchandise? And and that's a revenue stream that we're, that, that we're not using. And I would think that's, although I, not everybody across the board now, I think Sydney did a great job. Melbourne's done a great job of merch. I know Perth sold a lot of gear late. And again, some of that's because you didn't play a lot, but that'd be my thing. And then I would, I would, I would add to 
that you got to continue to get those kiddos involved. Yeah. Somehow, yeah. some way. And that, that was, those, those are my two. There's a long laundry list, but a lot of things, the themes we talk about go over and over again. Uh, yeah. Crystal balls. We wrap this thing up. Um, what is the most impressing need? Is it to have a CEO or a, uh, that's the, to me, that's gotta be the first thing besides the financial ramifications of what happened this year. Yeah. Look, I, I think, yeah, and I was having a conversation um, about this yesterday. I, like, I think you need, look, I, I'd love to see, uh, I know he joined us on the, I know he joined us in the comments before, but look, I'd love to see someone like Shane Tonkin in, in the role. I'd love to see maybe if it's not a Shane Tonkin, it's a Justin Huber or someone like that. I, I really feel like baseball is just a, a game that I, I just feel like it's probably, you know, I think Cam Cam's done a great job getting it to where it currently is. I think for a little while, I'm not saying forever, but I think for a little while, just maybe someone, maybe a baseball person is, is you know, when we used to call it a baseball person is, is worth yeah. just kind of, and that, that could be someone from the US as well. I mean, that, that could be a, an executive for, for a team. It, it could very well be someone who, you know, has maybe spent a bit of time here or not, or, or kind of understands the land. But I'd, I'd love to see someone like that kind of get involved. I think I think baseball is, so, I, I think we're at the intersection where if you turn right, there's the golden highway. If you if you accidentally turn left, I think you're into Death Valley. And I think that's yeah, that's yeah. exactly... I think that's where we are with, with baseball in this country. So I think, you know, of course, the rumors circulating around uh, Major League Baseball coming to Perth to, to start their season um, next year or the year after. So there's a lot of good things happening in, in the world of baseball. It's just, you know, now getting that appointment right is critical. And, and as I say, you've just got to kind of, uh, you've just got to, you're at that intersection, DV. Left's Death Valley, right's the yep. Golden yep. Highway. So. Yeah, I think I think we learned a lot of yeah, and I think we learned a lot of lessons this year. And I think we'll know we won't be as you know we learned a lot. I think we all in all leagues, Major League Baseball, American Association, Australian Baseball League, there's a lot of lessons that were learned, and I, I think that going forward will only will only benefit us. I will say this, and we're gonna we're gonna get Cam on uh, before he steps down officially, uh, kind of an exit interview, so to speak. But uh, he brought a he's brought a level of professionalism that I hope. That, that that I think kind of comes from someone in the sporting business that's been in sport, yeah. whether yeah. it be whether it be baseball, softball, whatever. He he's brings a professional perspective from from sport in general. And I think you're mm -hmm. right. You've got us. You're set there. And now maybe somebody with the baseball background because baseball is different. It's it's something I used to I talk about all the time. You just don't open the gates and say, "Come on in, folks. Let's come on yeah. in and come on and have a game." The work you do. And we say this all the time in the American Association, the work you're doing right now, February 18th, 19th, directly correlates what your crowds, your numbers, yeah. your bank deposits will be July 18th or 19th. If you do, do your due diligence on sales and marketing and putting people in the right sponsorship mode and also getting tickets sold, and it works the same on the ABL. The work that's done July, August, September directly correlates to what goes on at the gate in January and December. And, and it, it also works with going on the field too. If you're recruiting like the aces do, they're recruiting these guys year round. They know what they're doing. They're getting these guys commitments Absolutely. that work. It, it, so you're seeing, so now you need to see somebody perhaps from a, a baseball point of view, jump in and kind of meet where cam was and take this thing forward. Cause you're right. It's, it's very scary. That bar ditch is there. Uh, co final comments here. Oh, sorry about that, guys. My screen's acting Brian, funny here. Brian's learned, Brian's there we learned go. everything ABL for you, which is great. And uh, of course, DV, you're the you're you're the uh, I, 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 I was only talking to someone about this yesterday. I was just saying, I don't, <laughs> I don't think uh, the league taps into you enough either in the US. Uh, well, and, uh, and then uh, Matt's got a job for you too, DV. <laughs> so, well, it's funny, it's so funny you say that because I was chatting with a mate of ours who uh, remained nameless, but a couple days ago, and I said, I, I kind of tongue in cheek to them. I said, why have they called Paul Morgan? I mean, he, the guys in the country, uh, he does have a North American. I, I, I think it. I don't think either one of us would be upset with the call if they called us and said, Hey, we're not auditioning for the job. I'm not, we, I, neither one of us has sent our, our CV in, but I think we listen. I do know this, and I'll tell you guys this, and this is something I think that I don't think is a secret. Uh, we have big things ahead planned. We do. 
Uh, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're not fly by night, although we sometimes seem like it. We're not going anywhere. We have some things in the works. And while the audio may fade in and out and Facebook may fade in and out, we have some things in the hopper going forward that I think will be exciting, both just with what we're doing here and some other things that all are baseball related. So uh, if they say, hey, uh, um, uh, it'll be, yeah, it, it'll be TV. It'll be, it's it's uh, yeah, one of those things I think now for us, as you said, to echo you, we've got a lot of good things happening. There's a lot of uh, things happening. We'll head it. We'll put the show on dry dock for a couple of weeks and then we'll yeah. uh, come back. Come back hard for Major yep. League Baseball and, uh, and yep. also the association. Yep. And uh, but yep. we're we're working on our audio products, we're working on our video products, yep. we're working yep. on our yep. platform, um, working on some merchandise options as well. There's plenty going yes. on. Yeah. TBA, yes, we're gonna Australia. we're gonna take it. We're gonna be on the dry dock for a couple of weeks. Uh, you and I are gonna have a chat next week. We're gonna get caught up once they sh finish shoveling snow in Texas. And we're going to get going, but we are going to, Looks as like I you mentioned, got the, the power back. Though. Yeah, I got the power back. Uh, I, I did mention in the open, just in case, if, if this platform is not where we want to be, we have the ability to move this show to YouTube, to a website. We have the ability. I have the technology, and we have the resources, and we have the uh, software to do that if we if we choose to. So uh, look for that. We're going to do some things now that we have some time to kind of okay, because I got a window between now and the. Uh, a monarch season to do that. So uh, all good, but uh, partner, you know, I, we, we, the last few shows, we've kind of just thrown things out there, but I think this, this has kind of worked for us because I think the way the season went, there's so many things happening week by week that we get just a laundry list of things just to go to scatter shoot and throw out there. I think this format's worked the last couple of weeks. It's been a different year for us, and we've we've adjusted yes. as broadcasters. So it has, good. but I think, uh, but but we picked up this. Show. I, I think we started redoing this show again, maybe in June, J June, July, yeah. something like yeah. that. So we've so we've had a long, consistent uh, c consistency in the in, in the weeks of the show. So yeah, a couple of weeks off for us, and uh, I'm excited about Major League Baseball this year, and uh, and, and the association, and just uh, and uh, a lot of good things happening. So uh, absolutely, DV, I've got I've got to head off. Get my morning started, have a meeting, but uh, appreciate right, everyone's mate. company throughout the ABL season. Congratulations again, Melbourne Aces, the best team won. DV, I've enjoyed every Friday, and we'll uh, two weeks or so off and back for MLB soon. All right, mate, I'll talk to you soon. There, there he goes, Paul soon. Morgan. There he goes, Paul Morgan right there. Uh, the greatness of Paul Morgan right there. Appreciate him uh, being a broadcast partner. Again, uh, we'll be updating all this for you guys down the road. Uh, we do have a website. I've it's been designed. We did unveil it, although I talked about it off and on to the season, but it was a lot to undertake to unveil it with this stuff until because we well, first off, there was always that chance I was gonna be in Australia, so that's also part of it too. But we we're gonna kind of reset the button. We'll have that also. You guys have asked for an audio format, that'll be coming as well. So we have that coming. Yeah, well done. He does a phenomenal job. Uh does he does Paul uh Paul and uh uh, you know, appreciate it, uh, Bob, as well. A uh, couple things. Again, uh, if you are interested and you want to follow American Association Baseball and kind of get you guys uh, uh, going tomorrow, uh, it'll be noon Central Daylight Time on a Friday in North America, which puts it at uh, 2 a.m. in Australia. But if you're in the east uh, of the country, you uh, might get up way, way early on a Saturday uh, you can watch uh, Monarchs Live. We'll be uh, discussing the Kansas City Monarchs, which I believe is the official team of Talking Baseball Australia. And uh, we'll be discussing the schedule that's been out. And uh, I'm going to be joined by Morgan Kalenda, the Director of Marketing. We're going to break down the schedule a little bit and also the hot stove and also give you some uh, Monarchs 101. It's uh, when you're rebranding with what we're doing with Kansas City with this great uh, Monarchs name and legacy of the Negro Leagues, uh, we're all getting some education too. So we're breaking it down 101. And tomorrow I'll be discussing the founding of the Negro National Leagues and the Paseo YMCA in Kansas City, Missouri, which is still standing today. And we will discuss that and kind of uh, give a little, little history as uh, we'll talk American Association. That'll be tomorrow at noon on Facebook on the Kansas City Monarchs page. And I oftentimes will post links on my Twitter as well. But uh, Anyway, uh, th that's what we got today. Uh, I would be shocked if it's uh, not a Delman Young Helms winner. Uh, we weren't shocked that it was a Melbourne Aces uh, Claxton Shield winner. They're twenty fourth Claxton Shield for the Victorians. That leads all uh, 
parties involved. Uh, the uh, South Australians and Western Australians both, I believe, are second with 15. But uh, that is now back to back. And uh, lately, as uh, uh, we've seen recently, Dave Nielsen's uh, bandits so won three in a row. And then before that, we had uh, a couple of back to backs in the West. And then, uh, of course, it seems like the EBL, they win them in bunches. So uh, I appreciate it, Steve, as well, for your kind words. And Ethan as well, and I appreciate it. We will be back. And again, just look for those updates. We'll, we'll post it on our Facebook page and all those. Just go there. Even if you're in Australia, we'll, we'll be posting it uh, from both sides of the globe on our Facebook page. Keep you guys updated as well. Congratulations to all the family at the Melbourne Aces. Good people. Um, phenomenal people, especially uh, guys like Mick Warren. Just thumbs up, man. Just so happy for all those folks there in Victoria, just again, it's one of those crazy years. I wouldn't have been upset whoever won it, but especially this year, there's not any kind of dramas at all because it's been that kind of year. It's been that crazy kind of year where a lot of ups and downs and just for someone to be happy for one night and celebrate baseball like it should be celebrated. Hey, I'm all with it. All good. Uh, Andy Kyle, by the way, I want to big thanks to him this year to Andy, the manager of the heat, uh, back and forth every week, and I appreciate his support of our show and helping us in our broadcast. Of course, Cam Vale, as always, for being a big part of things. All you fans worldwide, the reason that we do what we do is because you guys believe as well. It's contagious. You know, when I when we chat with somebody like uh, for Ethan or Steve or Bob or whoever, I, I think a guy like Stuart Capel, when I, when I chat with you guys or we have a, a Mark Reedy on the broadcast and we had a few months ago, we it, it, it's contagious. That energy is contagious. You know, it's, it's that feeling you get at the ballpark in Brisbane on a Saturday night when those folks are jumping or in Canberra during a wild card game when those folks are jumping or another big sellout crowd almost at the ballpark in the West. You know, having been to all the ballparks except for the one in New Zealand, you get that feeling and it's contagious. You go to these parks, you get around those people, their love for the great game, their love for ABL is contagious. And that's where I'm coming from when I said things are going to keep rocking. That's one of the things are going to keep rocking. Keep rocking our contagious love and growing our game domestically because it will grow internationally. It's growing already, our international footprint. But our domestic footprint is going to grow. We keep doing what we're doing and keep doing it and keep working together as a collective baseball family. Big thanks to my mate, best mate, Paul Morgan. We are baseball's best mate. We are talking baseball Australia live again. Updates are coming dry dog for a couple of weeks back uh, around mid March, right in time for spring break. Heck maybe we'll do the show from the beach. Cause I need to, cause the snow is a little, little tiresome after we get here in North Texas. Good to see Wendy as well out there. Uh, mom appreciate it as well. Everybody else's kind words and a big, uh, thank you to everybody watching us. And of course, my broadcast partner, Paul Morgan. The parlor I hate the most. Play the clothes. Let's roll it in three, two, one. Let's be better tomorrow than we were today. Better fans tomorrow than we were today. Just better people tomorrow than we were today. Much love, virtual hugs worldwide. And we'll see you next time on Talking Baseball Australia Live. Baseball's best mate all year long. Here we go.